um, uh, stressing on here that AB is equal to CD. The vector AB is equal to CD. Remember, these ones do not have those straight lines, so we are not talking about absolute values of these two or the lengths of. Okay, so these are vectors. So AB is equal to CD, or we say AB, the vector AB is equivalent to CD. If and only if the length of AB is equal to the length of the vector CD and the direction of AB is equal to the direction of CD. So what this means is that when two vectors are equal, okay, if I say vector AB is equal to vector CD, okay, I can say that their hot lengths are equal. Okay, once two vectors are equal, their lengths are equal, the magnitudes are equal. But if two vectors are equal, if you give if the magnitude or the lengths of two vectors are the same, it doesn't guarantee that the vectors are equal. That alone is not enough. Okay, the uh, the lengths of uh, two vectors, if they are equal, we cannot conclude that the vectors are hot equal. That is not enough. We must have the directions. In addition, we must have the directions of the two vectors to be the same before we can say that they are equal, the vectors are equal. So if the magnitudes are the same and the directions are also the same, then I can say the vectors are equal. Okay, we'll, 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 we'll come to this again uh, in this lecture. No, uh, in our lecture for this model, okay, I think this will pop up again. So please take notes of this. Now, vector addition, vector addition. So this brings us to vector addition, the triangle law of vector addition, the triangle law of vector addition. So here we consider triangle PQR, whose sides, two sides are represented by the directed line segment PQ and QR. Say that PQ is little a third and then QR is little b third. So we represent the directed uh, line segment PQ by little a third, and we do the same, we represent this, okay, the directed line segment QR, okay, that, that side QR, okay, of the triangle by little b third. So these are vectors, and they represent sides or uh, two, okay, sides of what? Triangle P Q R. Now, you see, there's two vectors. Okay. Now, the resultant of those two vectors is this A plus B, or what we call the vector sum. Okay, the vector sum of A and B is A plus B. Okay is denoted by this, this is the, uh, the, the resultant of the two vectors and is denoted by this for the vector sum of the two vectors, okay, is this. And is defined as the side, okay, the directed line segment PR of this triangle. So what we are seeing here is, oh, we have three vertices here, okay, so three sides of this triangle now, if I decide to move from P to R, okay, this line segment so that P will be the initial, that will be the terminal, R will be the terminal point of the line segment, A, uh, P, R. I can decide to move along, okay, this side, okay, P to Q, then from Q to R, okay? So in that case, I have P, Q, which is A plus QR, which is B, to be equal to PR. That's why PR is defined as what? A plus B, the sum of the two vectors. So PR equal to the vector PQ plus the vector QR is what we call the triangle law of vector addition. The triangle law of vector addition. So we are using the triangle to get this two vectors added, okay? So uh, put together, so that is uh, beside PR. 
Now we can we can do it for the side PQ. Okay, the side that we are interested in. So PQ, if I want PQ, okay, P is initial. Now Q is a terminal. I can move along, okay, this way. So PR plus what? RQ. PR, the line segment PR plus the line segment RQ will give me the line segment PQ. And that again is the triangle law of vector addition. The triangle law of vector addition. So this can be written in different ways. Okay, so here we are using PR. So the law is PR, okay, the direct line segment PR to be equal to the direct line segment PQ plus the direct line segment QR. So that is a triangle law of vector addition. Okay. Okay, so that's it. Um, I think I've uh, explained this uh, already. Okay, so some deductions. Okay, so there's the law. Okay, PR is equal to PQ plus QR, the triangle law of vector addition. Now, the triangle inequality. So, from the geometric point of view, let's go back and look at the distance around. Okay, so PR, the distance. So, right now we are just looking at what the magnitude. Okay ignoring direction so uh the point is uh, okay mm. so here this is where we take into consideration both the magnitude and what the direction and we have equality here okay but if we ignore the directions and consider only the lengths of the vectors this will tend to uh, uh inequality because uh let's go back and look at that diagram. Okay, so the distance between P, R, okay, the distance between these two points, which is represented by the length of the line segment PR, is always less, okay, smaller or equal to the distance between P and Q, that's the length of the line segment PQ, Okay, plus the length of the line segment QR. <clears throat> Sorry. So, this, when we consider the lengths, okay, we have this inequality, and we call that the triangle inequality. The length of the vector PR to be less or equal to the length of the vector QR plus the length of the vector uh, QR. And that is what we call the triangle inequality. And that is our first deduction from the triangle law of vector addition from this law. And you know, PR is defined as A plus B. Whilst A here stands for PR, okay, and B stands for the vector QR. So you have this. And what this means is that um, the triangle uh, inequality here yeah, means that the length, okay, of the sum of two vectors, okay, remember A and B here stand for the vectors or the directed line segments PQ and QR respectively. So the length of these two vectors A and B is less or equal to the sum of their lengths, okay. So the length, okay, of the sum of two vectors is less or equal to the sum of their lengths. That is a triangle inequality. Then the second deductive, the second deduction here is the additive identity for vectors. Additive identity for vectors. So like um, we have for real numbers, uh, we have zero as the uh, additive identity for real numbers. Uh, we want uh, to find out whether the zero vector here will also play the same role, whether the zero vector will be the additive identity for vectors. You no, know, when you add zero to any real number, okay, that number remains the same. So again, from this tri uh, the triangle law of vector addition, okay, if R, okay, 
um, replaces Q, or if R coincides with Q, that is anywhere we see, okay, R here, we write Q. Then this one, the triangle law of vector addition becomes PQ, QR, PQ. Okay, so that's all you have. So this one becomes this. And this QQ is uh, the directed represent the zero vector. Okay, there's a geometric uh, interpretation of the zero vector. Okay, it starts from Q and ends at Q. It's this directed line segment represent the zero vector. And you know, um, uh, QR is what is B. So if R is now Q here, yeah, then B must be zero. So you have A plus B third, which is zero to be equal to A. So you have this equation. So A third, which is PQ plus zero vector here, yeah, which is the directed line segment QQ is equal to A. So when we add A, the vector A to the zero vector, we get A. So A, okay, added to the zero vector gives A. So when we add, and A here stands for any vector. So when we add a vector, any vector to the zero vector, the vector remains the same. Now, similarly, if P and Q coincide, okay, that is uh, here, if we put, um, uh, uh, we write, we replace P, okay, in this equation with Q, we will get this. And of course, you can do it, you can replace, instead of uh, replacing P with Q, you can replace Q with P. You come out with the same results. So we replace this, okay, uh, um, P, okay, in the vector, the triangle law, or vector addition that we have established here, okay, with what? With Q, and the law becomes this. Okay, so now we start with the zero vector. And remember this QR, okay, this line segment uh, will represent this by B, it's represented by B. So you have a zero vector plus B to be equal to B. So we have this. And what this means is that when we add a zero vector to the vector B, we get B. Okay, so this two, okay, tell us that the zero vector is additive identity. In the vector, added to the zero vector, we get uh, that vector. And the zero vector added to any vector, okay, uh, will not change, okay, uh, the, the, uh, the size or the direction of that vector. Okay, the vector remains the same. Okay, then the last deduction here is the additive inverse of vectors. So again, we are using the triangle law of vector addition that we established earlier. Okay, this time if P and R coincide, that is if in this law, okay, if we call P R or R P, okay, we we'll get will come out with um, this additive inverse so of factor. So if we replace okay R with P, we'll get this. Okay, that's what we have, R with P, the law becomes thus. And this time it's PP, okay, that tends to be the zero vector. Okay, so, and of course, PQ, okay, PQ is A. It's represented by little a, so that's the vector A. So we have A here plus QP to be equal to the zero vector. So therefore, uh, QP is equal to negative that because this is zero vector. So QP is equal to negative PQ and that is negative A. Okay, so QP is negative A. So what it means is that this one, A plus negative A is equal to the zero vector. A plus negative A is equal to the zero vector. So we call the negative A the additive inverse of A the additive inverse of A, okay, of vectors, the additive inverse of the vector A is negative A. It's like um, the additive inverse of the real number two is two, because if you add two to negative two, you get 
the additive identity for the real numbers, which is zero. So this brings us to the end of the triangle law of vector addition and uh, its uh, deductions.